Hey everyone, today our goal is to be able to take data living inside of an Excel workbook and automatically update that data into a SharePoint list. Not only do we wanna take all the values that we currently have, add them to that SharePoint list, but anytime we have a value that is updated that currently exists on that SharePoint list, let's go ahead and update the list as well. So every day we can always make sure that anything we change in the Excel workbook is automatically added to that SharePoint list. So here we are with our Excel table. You can see here I have a, just a couple of different values, four columns here, and it is formatted as a table. In order to let this work within Power Automate, in order to let this work within Power Automate, we need to make sure that this data is formatted as a table. So you can tell here, if I click on the table itself, we go to our table design, you can see I have a table and the table name is table one, right there. Now that's what we can use inside of our Flow with Power Automate to make sure we are being able to pull these values and add it into our SharePoint list. So first things first, let's make sure that we do have this data inside of a storage location in the cloud. In this case, I am choosing OneDrive. You can see there, it's called Office Supply. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that location. I'm also gonna make sure I have my Excel file closed in this instance to make sure I can actually pull the full data. And what we also have is a SharePoint list here with the exact same columns that we saw before. So I have title, category, quantity and status. All four of these are gonna match what we have in Excel, making it really easy for us to automatically take that Excel data and place it here inside of our SharePoint list. So let's go ahead and build our flow and get the process started. To do that, we're gonna come here to Power Automate, and you can see here, I already started the, the piece here to build a scheduled cloud flow. What I'd like for this case is for this flow to run every single morning. So I know every day that my SharePoint list is fully updated with the newest data coming from that exact Excel workbook. So I'm gonna go ahead and select Create. And now what we're going to do is set up how we can read the data from that Excel workbook and add it into our SharePoint list. So our first step that we are gonna add here is we can come into our Excel online for business options. And what we wanna do is list rows present in table. This allows us to look at the entire table to see every single row there so we can write every single row into the SharePoint list. And now I just need to point to the location of that Excel workbook. This, this time it is gonna be in my OneDrive. Then I can point to the document library. Again, it is gonna be OneDrive, the exact file. There it is. And the table that I want to point to. It is possible we have multiple tables. So in this case, we are just gonna to point to the one that we have. But if we had multiple pages or worksheets in that workbook, we can see which exact table we wanna use. So there's our first option, list rows present in our Excel table. Our next step that we want to add is to go to SharePoint and make sure that we have all the available rows there just in case. The idea here is we don't wanna just add data into SharePoint all the time. We want to ensure that if that data is already there, we update it if, if need be. If it has a change, go ahead and update to the newest version of that. If not, just go ahead and leave it there as the original. So what we, we wanna do is go to SharePoint and under our SharePoint actions, we wanna use the get items connection. And this get items action allows us to get every single item on that list, essentially get all the rows on the table. Then I can point to my site address and my list. And now what we want to do is be able to filter down our SharePoint list to ensure that we're only matching the right rows. If we take a look at our Excel file once again, 
we can see that we have this title column, right? It's the primary column, essentially. It's the first one we see in a lot of tables, usually called title, especially in SharePoint. And what we're gonna do is match up all the values that have the same title to be able to pull them across. And they will go on a row by row basis, matching the title and then looking across the row to see all the data that we want to write in. So here for our get items, we select show advanced options. We want to use a filter query, an O data filter query. And in this case, we're going to say where the title column from SharePoint is equal to the title column from Excel. In order to use that, we're gonna use our single quotes wrapped around our dynamic content that we are pulling from Excel. So we're gonna use that in here in order to make sure that those two values are matched up on a row by row basis. Once that is the case, we can ensure that the data is actually gonna be presented properly for us. So we can add in our title. And once we do that, you will notice we are gonna have this apply to each action added in. What this loop does, this for each loop does for us here, is it ensures that every single row coming from our Excel table, there you go, there's our value list of items from our Excel table. Every single row that we are having on that table is gonna be iterated over in order to match up to all the rows possible from our SharePoint list. And now once we have that get items, what we can do is go ahead and check our list, build in a condition by adding an action using the condition control. We're gonna build in a condition to check over our SharePoint list to see, is there something there for that specific row? If that row is empty based on that title, then go ahead and create something. If it's not empty, then there's something actually there. Well, let's go update that row. In order to do that, we are gonna come into our condition here and we're gonna add an expression. This expression is going to test the length of that specific collection, that row that we are passing in here. So we're going to see the length of our value list of items. We're going to pass that in from our SharePoint list. So there we have it, the length of that share, that specific row in the SharePoint list, hit OK. And we're going to say if that is greater than zero. If it's greater than zero, which means there's something on that row, what we want to do is update that row. If there's, if it is less than zero or it's equal to zero, we want to then create a new item for that specific title. So our first action here for if yes, we're going to go back into our SharePoint actions and we are going to go get the update item action it might be faster if i search for it and it probably will but it's i'm already down here there it is update item and now once again we need to point back to the same address same list that we had before and now what we need to do is pass in the unique identifier of the item what we want to do is utilize the ID from our original get items. So we're going to use the dynamic content. If you click in here for the ID, there it is, the list item ID. This is the unique identifier that we can pass through. And now what we can do is go ahead and add in our next steps here. Okay, the title has to match. So we're going to go ahead and use the title of the item that we want to update. Okay, we can go ahead and use the title from Excel in this case. So we're going to match that across. We're going to update the category. Okay, and then we can add in our quantity here from Excel. It's going to be all the way down at the bottom. There it is. And finally, we have our status value. Now, when we look at our choice options here, because this is a choice column sorted in SharePoint, 
if we want to pass in that dynamic content, we're going to come and select this option to show options here at the, the, the far right and choose to enter custom value. When you choose enter custom value, it does then allow you to pass through dynamic content into this. So then it can pull from the Excel table and actually pass in the exact value that you want. So then we can come here and choose status. So now we have our ability to update an item if it already exists. So any of the new changes will automatically be written in here. Then what we'll also do on the if no path of this condition, if there is nothing already there, if the length of that specific row, any of the values within it is not greater than zero, meaning there's nothing there, let's go ahead and then create an item rather than updating an item. So we can go and just simply choose create item for SharePoint. And we can pass through the same data just as we did with our update item. So our site address, our list name, and now we'll put in our title. This will all be coming from Excel. We can put in our category again from Excel. So it's going to be all the way at the bottom. Our quantity again from Excel. And finally, the status, just as we had with the update item, we're going to make sure we select to enter custom value within this field and take a look and add in our status. Now, as this flow works, it's going to check over every single row from Excel and from SharePoint, match up those rows on the title. If the title matches from one row to the next, then we're gonna go ahead and either update that item or if it, it's not there because there's nothing there to match, then it's gonna go ahead and create an item. So we're gonna go ahead and save and we'll run this right now, we'll do a test. Now, one of the things to keep note about as we work within Power Automate and Excel, it is gonna be better if we had some type of row ID, some type of unique identifier for each row coming from Excel in order for this to match up even cleaner. In this case, I've just chosen some generic titles for things in the office, but it would be much better if for row one, it was listed as one, and then it'd be a chair or row two, for a monitor, whatever it might be. So we're using that unique identifier instead of uh, having the this kind of the general title there in, in case. So keep that in mind as you're working through here. That'll just make this work even better in the future. So we're matching up row by row, just in case that title does exist more than once within our SharePoint list. So let's go ahead and do our test here. I wanna make sure I just close that Excel file and do our save and test and let's take a look and now we're having the iteration over each row here you can see that's what the apply to each is providing us we've we've seen that it's gone through five different times so we should have five different values added to our sharepoint list Let's go to SharePoint and we have one, two, three, four, and five. There they are, all five added in, including our choice column. Now, if we were to go to the Excel file, this office applies here, we should see that we do have one, two, three, four, five that are added in there. And now let's try something just to, to make sure this is working the exact way we want. Let's come in here and update some of these. So let's say for desk, I'm just gonna add in uh, actually in furniture, let's just do this, update it. Add some fields here. Let's say we also, we've received our chair, so we're gonna change that status to delivered. So we're now gonna update two of our different fields, the desk row and the chair row here within Excel. And what we'll have is, when this flow is intended to work, when we have it running every single day, tomorrow when this runs again, it will look through and add in the new data. Now, instead of waiting for tomorrow, what we can do here is we can do another test run on our flow. So let me go ahead and close that Excel file, do another test, another manual test, go ahead and run the flow from here, hit done, rows, we have run successfully, it's only five rows, so it should go pretty quick. We can see it is gonna look through all five once again. If I go back to our SharePoint site, there it is. 
desk was updated with the update. I could just add that in there and chair, the status was updated to delivered. So we're now able to not only add in new values from that Excel workbook, but also any value, any row that has been modified since the last run. So now we can utilize a shared Excel file, like a lot of us do within our organizations, that can be shared somewhere through our OneDrive. Go ahead and let our users write directly into it, add stuff, remove things as we work as a team. And then we can know we can have all that data stored once again inside of SharePoint that we use for a collection of other data for other purposes that we may want to have as a backup source for everything that we are doing. Thanks for joining me here once again, taking a look at how we can utilize Power Automate to make our lives better, working with Excel and SharePoint this time, you notice it's really nice and simple. It's a great way for us to make sure every piece of data that we are working with on a daily basis is in the exact location and we get to automate all those processes at the same time. Stay tuned for future videos. Until then, see you next time.